Hey everyone, what's up? I'm Summer and Nen. And I'm Sarah Ramston, and we are answering your questions. All right, so in today's episode, we have a question from Lisa on the East Coast, and she wants to know, I've been eating paleo for over three years, but I continue to have a sensitivity to dairy. Is there any way to get rid of it? Now, we've done a couple of episodes on dairy, so we're gonna talk more generally about this in terms of can you get rid of a food sensitivity? So the first thing to understand is the difference between an allergy and a food sensitivity or intolerance. So an allergy is something that your doctor would test using something like that skin prick test, which would show uh, whether you have an IgE response to a certain food, which is the immune response that is giving you that allergic reaction. And if that's the case, then you need to avoid that food for life. Uh, a food sensitivity or intolerance uh, shows up sometimes as an IgG immune response, which means that you might get a similar kind of symptoms to an allergy, but without that risk of anaphylaxis. So yeah. if you have an allergy, you truly need to avoid it for life versus a food sensitivity or intolerance, which we're going to talk more about. Yeah. And so to get a few other possibilities out of the ways, um, other ways that you could be having reactions to food is from a digestive perspective. So there's a possibility, particularly with dairy and with lactose, the sugar in dairy, is that you may be missing the enzyme required to break it down. And this is going to cause you digestive problems, mainly um, that rumbling in the belly, that uh, kind of upset stomach that we've talked about before in a previous episode. So that's one thing, like you're just simply missing the enzyme to break down a particular food. You can't do anything about that, unfortunately, um, so you just need to test the foods that will work for you from a dairy perspective. Um, other things that might be going awry in digestion is that maybe you have transporter issues and this would come up in particular with uh, fructose intolerances. So that's another one you have to be wary of and that doesn't involve so much the immune system. And the final one that we have to think about is that maybe you're in a state of gut dysbiosis which is when that balance of the good and the bad bacteria um, are off kilter and the bad bacteria have taken over um, which can give you all sorts of symptoms when you eat certain foods, including symptoms to foods that you might otherwise expect to be as a result of lacking an enzyme or having transporter issues, but really it's because of these bad bacteria. And so we need to get those ones out of the way because they can produce some similar symptoms to some of these food sensitivities and intolerances that we're going to talk about. Yeah, so what do you do? Well, oftentimes when we see clients or we meet people and they're following like a very strict kind of paleo-ish or whole foods diet and they're still experiencing uh, food sensitivities, it's because they haven't really done a full kind of gut healing protocol. And so that's what you need to do in addition to the super clean diet. Yeah. And when she means a gut healing protocol, it's because basically if you're coming to us as nutritionists and you are telling us you have food sensitivities, the number one alarm bell that's going to go off in our head is that you are experiencing increased intestinal permeability, or otherwise known, like in short, leaky gut. Yeah. And what that is, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is that the intestinal membrane, which is very delicate, it's only one cell thick, should be very much like you know the skin on your arm. It's a nice cohesive membrane that protects the inside from the outside. And when it gets damaged, the cells can get pulled apart, and this means that partially digestive proteins and other things that shouldn't be getting into your body through the digestive tract can get in and this is going to cause an immune response. It's going to be like a foreign invader to the immune system, it's going to get riled up and it's going to respond. And so that's what happens, that's the thing that produces these symptoms in your body as a result of a food sensitivity. So that's why we have to heal the gut, this is where we're really going with this and what you need to be doing. Yeah, so the first thing that you need to do is to have a very strict clean diet. So doing an elimination diet um, for at least 30 days where you're eliminating uh, any sort of problematic foods, you know, like grains and dairy and sugar, and also things like alcohol and uh, certain painkillers and other prescription uh, drugs, even things like the birth control pill can upset um, the, the balance of, of uh, probiotics in your gut. 
Yeah. And you also want to have a bit of a varied diet. So if you're that person that eats eggs every single day for breakfast, then you want to change it up. So if you're if you're finding that you're buying the same like 10 foods every single week, then yeah. you need to have variety because you can develop a sensitivity when you're constantly eating the same thing over and over again. And if you already have food sensitivities, you are prone to more. So if you're always eating eggs for breakfast, it's really time to switch it up. And actually on that note, we should probably say that um, if you're on medications like the pill, antibiotics, yes. uh, any kind of chronic medication, make sure you check with your doctor before you come off them. Yes, never yeah. just go off of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what else? So you are going to clean up your diet, you're going to make sure it's nice and varied, you're not overloading yourself with any one food, which could lead you to future um, sensitivities. Um, you absolutely should be including bone broth every single day. It's very, very healing, particularly um, the glutamine and the glycine and the gelatin that are naturally occurring in that food. Yeah. And you can use it in soups and stews, you can just drink it, but it's an absolute everyday essential. And then from there, you really need to look at your digestion. So um, we're talking about these holes in, the, in your intestinal lining, partially digested proteins can get through them. We well, need to kind of cut off that flow of partially digested proteins as well and support digestion. And this starts um, every morning. I actually recommend that every client um, has a glass of warm water with a juice of half a lemon. This is a really simple thing you can do just to get your digestive juices flowing and get things going. Now from there, you need to make sure you're chewing every single mouthful really, really, really well. Because if you're not doing that, if you're eating in a hurried state, everything else honestly is kind of pointless. From then on, you need to make sure you're supporting your stomach acid production. A lot of people have low stomach acid and this is where protein digestion begins. So lots of ways to determine this and you really should um, work with a practitioner to determine if you have issues in, with this. Yeah. And then moving on, you need to um, perhaps supplement with enzymes because your pancreas has been overloaded, um, your intestinal lining is damaged and so likely not secreting the kind of enzymes in sufficient amounts that it normally would. So you need to support with an enzyme to kind of really relieve the load on that area of digestion as well. You also need to make sure that you are adding in some probiotics to fit, fix that gut dysbiosis that we talked about. So ideally we like to see you getting those through fermented foods. So things like sauerkraut, pickles, kimchi, and Sarah has amazing recipes for yeah. all of those things on her website. And you want to have a serving uh, every time you eat, so just kind of like a little side dish um, that you incorporate. That's that's the best way to get probiotics yeah. before actually buying probiotics from the health food store. Yeah, and we I think we always like work therapeutically at least at the beginning with probiotics as well, like a minimum of twenty billion. Um, but really get in the habit of the fermented foods. That's the most the most sustainable way of doing it in the long run because they're going to provide a nice like magic carpet protective layer in that digestive tract. So yeah. really important. Yeah. And the other thing too is how, like, just be aware of your digestive issues. If you're only going uh, number two, you know, once every couple days or not even once a day, then that's an issue. Like we want to see you doing number two at least once a day and twice a day is even better than that. It's and called number two for a reason. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Number two, two times. Yeah. So, you know, if that's, if that's an issue or you get bloating, gas, uh, cramping, like that's telling us that your digestive system is in need of, of some healing and, and some of the stuff that we're talking about here. Yeah. Another thing that can contribute to it is stress. So if you are chronically stressed, your digestive system is not going to be functioning properly. And that's also going to um, cause issues with your immune system, which can cause some of these reactions that we're talking about as well. So making sure that you address your adrenals and just your lifestyle and, and the stress in your life is also going to help to make this process so much better. Yeah, and if you have existing food sensitivities, this is an automatic kind of extra burden on your adrenals. As is things like bacterial, fungal, um, and whatever. Candida. Candida kind of style yeah. overgrowths in the gut are also going to stress the adrenals. They're going to kind of actively contribute to that kind of leaky gut as well. So those need to be um, addressed quite aggressively using herbs and other kind of supplements. And you really need to see a practitioner to help you out with that. All right, lastly, it's uh, the cumulative effect as well. So yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so we actually have a friend, like we met her, was it a year or two years ago? Yeah. And we met her, we, we often would go out on like our breakfast dates and she would have, for example, a chorizo sausage, which as I'm sure you know, has some chili pepper in there. And 
as someone who had a sensitivity to nightshades, which is your chili peppers, tomatoes, peppers, um, eggplants, those kind of things, she would literally, if she accidentally ate some chorizo, would go home and she would end up being sick and get very puffy. Now, a year later, two years later, she's actually a lot better. So she can eat peppers in her salad. She doesn't have to worry about um, kind of contaminations or unknown exposures. But so the, I guess the kind of the short answer is that yes, you can deal with food sensitivities, but it takes time. And you have to be aware of this thing, as Summer said, the cumulative effect. So one day you might be able to handle um, some peppers in a salad, but you may not be able to handle as well maybe um, some eggplants in a stew. So you have to really consider how much can your body handle at any one time. And by doing things like the Whole30 program and actually completely eliminating the sensitivities, like maybe a couple times a year, yeah. you can really see a big difference in how your tolerance is improving. So you maybe decide that, okay, now I can eat this thing that I'm particularly sensitive to once a day and I'm just fine, but twice a day is perhaps a bit too much for me. So the short answer is yes, you can get over food sensitivities, but as you can hear from our long-winded answers, it takes a bit of work and time. Yeah. And so we want to hear from you in the comments below. Tell us, do you have a food sensitivity that you have been able to overcome or that you can now incorporate that food in your life in a way that doesn't affect your health? Yeah, the one that you've been struggling with, to let us know what it is. Yeah. And send your questions to us at asksummerandsarah at gmail.com and we will feature you in an upcoming episode. Yeah. Yeah, and share this with your friends and family if you like what you're hearing here and you think that they might benefit from this information. Yeah. That's it for today's episode. We'll see you next time. Yeah, chat to you soon. See ya.